Hi guys, welcome back. Fred here at Math and Engineering. We're continuing uh, along with our effective interest rate videos. We did a video before on uh, effect, finding the effective interest rate when the compounding is at a different time frame but not continuous than the payment period. In this video, we have a payment period and we have what's called continuous compounding. So continuous compounding is more of like a mathematical principle. Essentially what it is is the the time period of the compounding is infinitely small. So it's like continuously compounding over time, which is really good if you're the one receiving compound uh, continuous compounding interest. That's amazing. So for example, instead of uh, the, the interest rate being compounded quarterly or, or monthly or yearly, it's compounded um, continuously on an infinitely small time frame and time period. So um, yeah, like I said, more of a mathematical concept than something you can really visualize, but it is important in economics, so uh, it is part of this course. And it's, it's fairly simple too. So let's take a look at this question. We'll practice how to uh, evaluate the effective interest rate when the uh, compounding is continuous. So let's read the question. A series of equal quarterly receipts of $500 extends over a period of five years. What is the present worth of the qu this quarterly payment series? Okay, so that's uh, that's an important thing to note there. Quarterly payment series at eight percent interest compounded continuously. So uh, whenever you see this here compounded continuously, you immediately need to go to the formula here that I provided, uh, which is the continuous compounding effective interest rate formula, and we have e to the uh, to the r divided by k minus one. Okay, so that's the formula that we're going to use, where r is the interest rate here. And K is the number of payment periods per year. Okay. Okay. So in this case, let's take a look at if we can find these values right away in our question. Okay. So we have our interest rate is 8% and number of payment periods per year. So we have a quarterly payment series. So that is going to be four, right? Because there's four quarters per year. And uh, next, next step is uh, to use the formula in order to find the interest rate. And what this looks like in terms of the cash flow diagram, because we do need to kind of figure out what formula we're going to use in order to solve this. So that's a big part of this, uh, this, this course is to figure out what they're looking for. Okay, so if we have, look for, look for the hints. You, de you do need to read the question and extract the information. So we have a series of equal quarterly receipts of 500. So that's an annuity. Whenever you see an equal payment series, where there's continuously equal payments throughout a certain period of time, that's called an annuity. So we know there's going to be an A value in there, right? We have A and that's equal to 500. Those are our payments. And what, what are, is the question asking us for? It's asking us to find the present worth. What is the present worth? Okay, so we want to find P. Okay. So uh, if we take a look at what this is, okay, we have P here, present, we're in the present at n equals zero, and we want to know what this series of quarterly payments at 500 compounded continuously for a period of five years is. So we do need to find our n value, okay? And our n value is simply the number of payments times the number of years. So we have five times the number of uh, payments per year, right? So that's going to be 20, right? So we, have, so we have 20 quarters within five years. So it's going to look like this, okay, where we're going to, okay, so these are all a equals 500. And we're going to have two, three, four, five, six, where this is the number of quarters. Okay. And then all the way to 20. Okay. All right. So, and we are looking to find P, right? So we want to find P and we are given the value of the annuity. So the value, uh, the formula that we're going to use is P given A. So, so P given A is what we want to find. So let's go ahead and use the formula to get the interest rate first. That's the first step. So our I effective, okay, is equal to E to the power of R. We have 0 0.08 divided by K, which is four minus one. And that's going to be equal to, okay. And this is going to be 2.02% for our effective interest rate. And uh, if you watched the video before, you'll know that this interest rate corresponds to the payment period. Okay, so what we did is we found the interest rate that corresponds with the payment period, or the in this case, it's a period of receipts, but uh, either deposits or, or payments, whatever it is. Okay, in this case, it's quarterly receipts. Okay, so this is per quarter. 
Okay, so the interest rate that you find always corresponds to the quarterly, to the payment period. Okay, so now that we have the interest rate, well, we know we'd established before that we want to find pr the present value of this annuity, and we're given the annuity. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find the present given the annuity. So this is going to be P given A, right? So we have 500 P given A times the interest factor. So we have P given A, and what's our interest rate? 2.02, .02, and how many quarters do we have? 20. We established that already. And now, if you take a, uh, now, as we uh, established before, we don't have a 2.02 .02, uh, interest table, right? We don't have that, that doesn't exist. We only have two, three, four, we only have whole numbers. So when you get a decimal interest rate like this, you need to apply the formula directly in order to solve the, uh, the present value. So if you take a look at the screen, okay, I put up the uh, formula for P given A there, okay? So P given A, this is the formula. Very good, and we could just go ahead and start plugging in numbers. So it's as simple as that. So just getting the um, understanding exactly what we're looking for, and you know, being able to get the right, correct, effective interest rate is really the only trick to this question. Okay, so we have uh, one, and that's divided by. So we have one plus zero. 0 0.0202, okay, so you have to divide by 100 when you put it into the formula for the interest rate, to the power of 20 minus 1, and the bottom of the fraction is 0 0.0202 times 1 plus i to the n. And if we put that in our calculator, we're going to get 0.0202. Okay, we're going to get a value of, for our present value of this equal payment series, of 8,159.96. All right, and what does this mean? Well, obvi it's obviously important to understand what the value is that you got, right? Because that helps you not make mistakes in the future. So this present value here that is the value of the series of equal receipts, quarterly receipts of $500 extended over a period of five years. And those receipts are compounded continuously, okay? So an infinitely small uh, time frame. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you learned something there. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.